What's up? This is your Vincent Valentine, me ex Turk. I'm going to talk about a big subject right here. This might trigger you if you're one of those easily offended SJW types. <laughs> if not, then please listen to my message. I don't know why they think masculinity is wrong. Okay, ma there's a difference between toxic masculinity and a regular masculinity. Toxic masculinity is the bad boy, the bully, the thug, and the, you know, just stupid people. That's not real masculinity. That's toxic masculinity. Okay, my definition of masculinity is you pay your bills, if you live in, even if you, if you live with your parents, until you move out, pay your, you know, pay your parents' bills, go to the gym, because it don't, the gym is more than just a physical workout to make your body look good. It changes the mind, the spirituality of set person. It changes their mind on on select subjects, and then when you, you, it also builds confidence. So you never apologize for you being you. They never apologize for them being them. Um, let's see. Um, they tr they respect women, but what I mean by respect women is they respect women. You know, by not treating them like objects and stuff like that. But also, also, they don't just go, they, they don't do what I call hoe chasing. You know, they don't go, you know, chasing a bunch of girls. Or call 55 times. That's just, that's soft, that's weak. You, in order to have masculinity, you have to be strong, you know. Not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. You know. And. Okay, and yeah. They don't let women, you know, belittle them or treat them any kind of way. In fact, I don't know why they see. What I don't understand is some of these people that would include in the beta sphere of things. Such as the neckbeards. Such as that one, you know, one kid in the high school you know, that one kid in the high school who wants to hook up with a cheerleader, they want to hook up with something that's out of their league, and it's like, yeah. No, you, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with the nerd girl. The nerd girl is the girl you want, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about, okay, I'm going back to my definition of masculinity. They help around the house, they hit the gym, they go up for girls that are interested in them. You know... And they know how to talk to women without being socially awkward, you know, because they have so much confidence. They know what women want to hear. They know. And that's because they grew confident of themselves. They grew confident of their ability. You know, once you grow confidence in your ability, confidence in all your abilities. Let's put it this way. I'm trying to think. And another thing, too, about masculinity is, like, you know, you just don't be too soft. You don't let people run you over. You know, if someone gets in your face and disrespects you, it's okay to fight back. You know, you don't have to use your fist, of course, unless they punch you. Then it's in a fist. But, you know, if someone gets in your face and hollers in your face, holler back. There ain't nothing wrong with that. See, I don't understand why these third-wave feminists think that masculinity is inherently wrong. I think it's a good thing. They sh people should evolve, want to evolve to grow more masculine, especially guys. You know, hitting the gym's good. But also knowing how to talk to girls. You know, being able to lift more... Being able to lift at least 15. I've seen people in the gym... Bigger than me, not being able to lift 15, and I'm already on my 45s and my weight bar, and it's like, <laughs> it's it's pathetic, but no, but anyways, yeah, go to the gym, pay your bills, you know, treat with women with respect, but there's a difference between respect and then absolutely worshiping them. What I mean by respect is that, you know, you don't treat them like objects, but also, you don't go around bowing down your head like their goddess, you know, and say, oh, I'm in love already. Dude, you just met her the first day. You cannot possibly love that person. But masculinity also keeps your head straight, meaning 
that if you have real masculinity and real masculine traits, you're not going to be the type of person that does a bunch of drugs. You're not going to be the type of person that does stupid crap, you know, all the time. You're going to have your head straight. You're going to have your head in your books, in your career, in your jobs, in your college. Or if you, if you have a YouTube channel on, on your YouTube, you're not going to pay attention. You're not going to be doing all that extra crazy stuff. You're going to be having your head with, 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 on your goals. And masculinity helps get you to your goals because you focus your mind on all your goals you want to complete in life. Also, good, masculinity is good because it helps you be a leader. You know, and we need more leaders. We need more leaders in this world, you know? So, yeah. It's not like toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity is the thug, bad boy, drug user, just people who do stupid stuff. And that's because they're not all the way focused right here. Masculinity starts in here. It starts in the head. You know? You're not going to focus on your goals if you... If, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you, if you... If you don't have a strong mindset here. Real masculinity is about being strong up here. You get physical muscles once you go to the gym, but it also gives you a spirituality that makes you stronger. So you're focused on your goals. Your mind goes to a healthy place in its mind, and it goes straight to your goals, you know. So, you know, no matter what your goals are, you want to complete them. And it's a leader thing to do that. That's why I think we all guys should strive to be alpha. And that does not mean stop being ourselves because the way I see it is to be what I mean by the only time you need to stop being yourself is if you're a pushover and you're always sorry. Stop being sorry for being you. You should stop being sorry for being you. Okay? It's like in Yu-Gi-Oh! where, you know, you could have a good deck all you want. But if you feel nervous, shaky, and 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 sorry all the time, or sorry you did something, or you know you you, you don't play to win, you play apologizing for you using a good card. Instead, no, you should be unapologetic all the time, unless you absolutely do something wrong. But otherwise, you shouldn't be apologetic for being you. You know, you shouldn't be apologetic for you being be, you being you. You should always be you. Because like I said, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, if you're apologetic, you're not going to win. If you're too soft, you need to be confident in all your abilities. No matter what you use your abilities on, you have to be completely confident that you know you can, get, you, you can do it. That nobody can tell you that you can't. The only thing your mind registers is, I can, I will, and I can do it. That's all today.